Ahoy, me land lovers and scurvy dogs. How's that for a cheesy intro? Doesn't matter. Pirates get booty, if you know what I mean. So this has been on my to review list for quite a long time, several years, in fact. Um, since I can't do sore tests until I recover more from the shoulder injury, I'm uh, looking through older footage that I have saved and I found that, hey, I do actually have enough test footage for this to make a review. So here we go, finally. So this is called the North Star Cutlass. It's from Privateer Armory. The bladesmith is Ben Potter. And he offers two basic lines of custom swords. One is the quarter deck line, which consists of custom made uh, swords in uh, varying thicknesses, hand forged, and uh, those run between five hundred to a thousand dollars. And then there is the forecastle line, which this is from, which is ground blades from a one sixteenth inch thick steel. That's uh, one point six millimeters, and these have a slightly rougher finish than the quarter deck line, and. These are more budget price, so they're between $200 and $500. They are made of 15N20 steel, which has a carbon content of 0.75%. It's very similar to 1075, with a little extra toughness from added nickel. Quite an interesting cutlass. Oh, by the way, this guard shape here, that's not how it's supposed to be. It comes with a full D guard. This happened, I don't even know how it happened, on one day when I went out to test it. Um, I guess I struck something with the guard or something. I, I don't quite remember how it happened. But um, yeah, as you can see, it was dented. At first, I wanted to uh, bend that back into shape, but as I was looking at it, I, I thought, hey, actually, it looks kind of interesting. I don't really mind it. So it still allows a lot enough space for the hand even with gloves on so it's not a problem really so what's the idea behind a cutlass like this so it's it's not it's not historically accurate it's inspired by cutlasses but it's certainly different than those i've seen at least and uh, it's far thinner so it's really mainly for collectors of course and uh, you can certainly have some fun with it for backyard cutting but uh, it has some limitations because of how thin it is so this is actually the first sword i've run into that i consider too light for its own good usually on the sword reproduction market nowadays the main problem is most of them are too heavy that's really the standard problem too thick too heavy this is the opposite problem it's actually too light there is such a thing and the main issue with that is um, if somebody had to use a cutlass like this in a historical uh, in a historical sword fight the problem is in a bind against a heavier blade this would be at a severe disadvantage an opponent with a heavier blade could easily in the bind push it aside and uh, a static block, don't even think about it. This would be just impossible. A heavier blade would just uh, force its way right through it. Even with deflectional parries, I would be wary because there's really so little mass. And um, also in the cut, it also limits it to an extent. Um, you have to basically compensate for the lack of mass with extra velocity and of course there's there's a limit to how far how fast you can move your arm so if you have a sword at the right weight to to be able to move your arm at the same speed as you can without anything in your hand then it's pretty much ideal if it's any lighter than that you don't benefit from it so in this case what it does do very well is if you use it like a machete, basically. It is pretty similar to a machete blade in many ways. In that case, you can cut very easily through underbrush, you know, branches. It cuts into wood quite well because it is so thin, it bites in really well. In historical combat, it would 
probably be quite effective when hitting areas like the rib cage or the collarbone where you don't have that much flesh on top of the bone it would probably cut into the bone pretty well but um, it just lacks the um, the mass to really do a lot of soft tissue damage and in fact i tried some cutting on tatami mats and the cheap alternative soaked beach mats and that it really doesn't do well it just only got shallow cuts and we just couldn't cut through the entire roll it's just um yeah as i said just doesn't have quite enough mass and also it's it's too flexible the flexibility causes it to be, like even if the edge alignment is even just ever so slightly off if it's still good enough to actually cut through it it just it starts to flex so easily that it you know kind of flexes inside of the target and then just throws it off so you can see how easy it is for me to to flex this in fact it almost feels like i could snap this with my bare hands which i don't think so from the test i've done so far it actually seems pretty sturdy so against an opponent who wears some kind of padding or even just regular clothing this wouldn't perform very well at all um, however it's not intended for that you're not supposed to start a sword fight with this for real it's really just you know a collector's item and also just to have some fun in your backyard cutting water jugs and, and stuff like that for that it works really well um, it's also it has a nice auditory feedback if you will because it is so so thin it tends to sing a lot it's uh, quite a nice effect really you can cut through it without much resistance because it is so thin so it's uh, fairly easy to leave the bottom uh, of the bottle standing and uh, definitely a lot of fun using it that way by the way don't mind the poor technique in uh, some of the footage a few of those videos are pretty much about four years old by now so yeah i didn't really know what i was doing back then as far as the craftsmanship is concerned i don't have any complaints it's a very tight fit going by how sturdy the construction is i can only assume that it's peened but i can't really see the peen it's so polished it could be there but i'm not entirely sure i'm guessing that's how it was made because of how well it, it kept together despite uh, doing abusive tests the grip is quite nice I definitely like how it feels it's a uh, rounded rectangular and the, the cord wrap turned out pretty well looks good and feels good as well it's got the north star symbol etched in that looks quite nice my only problem is really that the steel for the guard seems to be a bit too soft i would prefer if that was tempered to a greater hardness to avoid such deformation it came with a simple wooden scabbard which uh, does not really retain the blade um, but it's a bit loose in there but uh, it works and it comes with rings if you want to wear it on the belt um, not much else to say about it really like i said in the forecastle line the finish is a bit rougher than the quarter deck line you can see that by looking at the grinding marks on the fuller but overall i think it's nice enough i like the appearance of the satin finish the sharpness is okay i wasn't blown away by it it could be sharper but it's perfectly usable the thin blade helps with the cutting performance anyway so it doesn't have to be quite as sharp so overall i would recommend this um, or you know similar cutlasses and other blades from privateer armory it does seem like good value for the money and uh, this has held up really well over the years despite the occasional abusive test nothing is loosened up it's quite remarkable how tight the fit is in the guard you can really not see any gap worth mentioning at all so that is quite nice i can't imagine that this would ever come loose and uh, handling due to the light weight is quite nice even with my right arm despite the separated shoulder i can i can swing it just fine even though i probably shouldn't but uh yeah you can even with just a an easy wrist flick you can move it around i think if the blade was about twice as thick this would be one of my favorite pieces in our collection or if it was from the quarter deck line because that would mean a thicker hand forged blade so that would solve these issues um, 
I bought it back in uh, 2011 or 2012. I was uh, second hand on um, what was that? the Sword Forum International, I think it was. And since then, we've been pretty happy with it. Has held up quite well and uh, good value for the price. That's all I can say, really. I'll post the specifications and link to Privateer Armory down below in the video description. And uh, by the way, if you do check it out, I would recommend taking a look at the Shell Guard Messer that he has in the gallery. That one looks really, really nice. I sure wouldn't mind having one of those. And that's it. So thanks for watching, you landlubbers.